Hey there everybody, it's Eva here from Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design. Welcome back to another session with us. And uh, today we're going to make a very simple, elegant solitaire ring with Rhino. And we're going to look at a couple of ways to sidestep problems that we run into when we're modeling. Like if you're already down the line and you have to go back and change things, but you don't want to start from the beginning, how do you deal with things like that? Well, this is kind of a, a small session in that. So it's a six prong ring, six prong solitaire ring, and um, I have already built it and I've laid out my layers here. I'm just going to switch them off and I'm copying and duplicating these so that I have a fresh batch of layers to begin with. And um, uh, what we're going to start with is the ring size. So I'm just going to click on my layer ring size and fetch my circle, uh, circle curve tool and from the front layer I'm going to start a circle curve on the um, zero axis and I'm going to use a circumference in my front view of 54. When I've done that I'm going to head on over to my curve layer and I'm going to start creating my rail curves and profile curves. So just for the um, for the start, I'm going to create the curve profile for my, my stone. So here I've got a round stone. Let's measure this one out. It's um, too many things up here. It's 4.5 in diameter, if I remember correctly. There you go, 4.5. And we want to make a cone setting, basic cone setting. So I'm just going to use my polyline. And I'm going to draw a side profile for a revolve. I'm not going to start smack in the middle because I can just cap that later once I've revolved it. And I'm going to stop around about 0 0.5 millimeters away or 0 0.8 millimeters away from the, 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 the girdle of my stone. And just bring it down towards the center just past my ring size. And then... I'm going to do the rail, the second rail for my shank. Um, so for that, I'm just going to do an offset of my ring size at about 1.5 millimeters. That's a good thickness for the, the ring, for the ring shank. And um, once I've made that offset curve, I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to use a cut plane. I'm just going to slice it right through the middle. You can see here in the perspective view what the cut plane looks like if you've never used one. And we're just going to use the trim tool to trim that curve in half and delete one side, wrong side. Oh, wait, go back. There we go. I prefer working on the right side of my front view. Okay, so now what we're going to do is move the points of our curve and create that side profile of our shank. I'm just going to move that up to the setting, move that second point down a bit. So you've got a bit of a straight line up. It looks it looks more elegant than if it's too bulky. Uh, anyway, it, it would be your preference. I mean, you can change that later with Rhino History on. We can always go back and fix a few things. So let's go. Now we're going to make the profile curves for our sweeps. And I'm going to start at the bottom with a two point curve. I'm just going to create a simple two point circle. And I'm going to move the points, so I create a bit of a, a comfort fit on the uh, inside of the ring. And I'm going to narrow the outside of the ring to a bit of a knife edge. It gives us that elegant kind of finish on the shank. And I'm going to copy that curve up the rail, the inside rail, to uh, the, where the s uh, second, second curve, ra uh, curve rail is ending at the setting. Uh, so let's just copy that, grab that inside point, and just, and just plop it over here. Mm, just a little bit in. Uh, past the setting. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to just rotate that with a rotation tool. And uh, so it faces in the direction of where the second rail ends. And... We're going to select the top three points of that curve and 
we are just simply going to use our move tool to splash them right there at the end of the rail okay great here we go uh, as i said we can change all kinds of things later this is the whole point of this exercise is to understand how to change things down the line not have to rebuild everything uh, okay so let's go yeah i'm just going to broaden up the bottom here okay i will do that mm. can't help myself okay so and we are going to do a sweep two rails use the ring size curve and the offset curve and then the two profile curves um, once I have my sweep dialog window open I'm going to make sure one thing first of all I want to maintain the height of this because otherwise you got that horrible kink and the maintain height keeps everything nice and clean and straight and the second thing is if you look at the ISO curves you'll see they slightly sheared along the side doesn't look good it's not good geometry it's not good modeling i'm just going to add a slash right in the middle on the side and just straighten those iso curves out and then we hit okay great so now we leave that well now we can actually change a few little things with rhino history having been on you can see i uh, just make a couple of adjustments and you're good to go as long as you keep it in the state it's in right now now we could also change the shape of the profile a bit so, so this this we will do at a later stage i like it from the top when the top half of the shank is thinner than the bottom half of the shank that's personal preference the next thing we want to do is the setting so the setting i'm going to go into setting layer and fetch my revolve and I'm going to do a revolve around the, the zero y a z axis of my object uh, 360 and I've got a cone here that I'm going to simply cap using my cap holes tool um, ah I haven't got a stone for this this group just going to duplicate the stone and put it in here add that it's a 4.5 millimeter stone just for my own reference it's useful so there you see little holes i'm going to cap those holes i'm going to go into my solid command tools and find cap planner holes and we've got a closed valid poly surface and now we need to scoop that poly surface out so I'm going to use my shell command I need a material thickness of around about 0 0.85 there we go shell and select the top surface of the cone be sure to also select the little surface in the middle because it was a hole uh, otherwise you'll have undesired results and here in the side view you can see it's nicely hollowed out there's a, a little tail in the middle the bottom uh, that's not great modeling uh, to admit so we're gonna have to fix that so what we're gonna do to fix that is we're going to create a cylinder because we also want to open it up a bit more at the bottom that's a bit too small a hole I'm gonna create a cylinder um, that's about the right size just bash it through there uh, it's a bit thick if you look from the side here the material thickness on the sides is getting too thin so we're going to grab that cylinder and we're going to scale it down just a touch there we go uh, make sure it goes straight through into the the, the the hollow part of the cone and we're just going to bullion that out it'll take care of the little tail that's stuck there that will eventually cause problems if you don't get rid of it okay great so now we've got our setting ready. Now what we're going to do is we're going to start working out how the setting and the shank play together. Is what we need to do is create the six claws around our stone. Um, so just mirror that shank over and get a good feeling for how the ring is looking. If it's too thin, it's definitely a bit too thin. Thicken that shank out at the bottom and bring those two points down create a, 
stronger comfort comfort fit. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Maybe we can make the top a touch, touch thicker. It's a little bit too narrow. Let's have a look. Is it? Is it? Is it? I kind of like it like that. I like it when it's got that knife edge. Uh, the thickness, the broadness of it is, is making up for the fact that it's so narrow. So what we have to do here now is we have to cut that rest of that little setting away. You might have seen Akio do this in one of her earlier videos. It, you're just going to select the ring size curve and you're going to use the trim tool in the view that you would like to cut through the, the object, the geometry. So I'm going to fetch my interpolated curve tool. I'm just going to draw a slightly curved, slightly uh, um, bird curve on my one uh, side of the axis, which I'm going to mirror over to the other. Um, it doesn't have to go through to the axis. You'll see we'll just use a blend tool to fix that so that we get a nice um, continuous, continuous curve at the bottom. We just Take the just a uh, quick ten, quick blend tool. There you go. Got a nice little arc at the bottom. Join everything, and using our gumball, we are just going to extrude that. Or first turn it a bit. There we go. Move it down, and I'm now going to extrude that curve through and bash right into the setting with it. Mm, so we want to see how that will look if we've got six of those. So how do we do this? We we just uh, I'm just going to pop that into my billion tools layer. I'm going to take that surface that's cutting into the other side. I'm just going to move it a bit. There we go. It's not cutting anymore. It's cleared, and we're going to grab the polar array transform tool, transform command. And with the polar array, I'm going to make six of these from the top view. It looks like some crazy flower geometry. And these are going to become our cutters to make our claws. And you can see here the claws are tiny at this point. They're not existing. They're certainly not touching the stone. So how do we fix that? Well, for starters, we're going to going to uh, squish our, our, our cutting tool a bit with a gumball, just scale it down in, the, in one axis. We're going to take our, our edges on the inside, narrow them so that they're smaller than on the outside. And um, we're going to have to play around with that a little bit. It all depends on how the claws are looking. I'm going to have to open them up a bit on the outside, like that. Yeah, it's looking good. At some point, we're going to have to look at what the shank looks like when it's attached to the settings. Do you know that it's not that the, the claw isn't going to be narrower than the shank coming out of the setting. Um, so, having a look here, mm, can still make a couple of adjustments. For instance, you could lift the inside curve up if you want to create a stronger uh, a stronger transition from the outside of the setting towards the inside. Um, but I think I'm, I'm happy with that. It's nice and clean. So I'm going to do a Boolean difference. I'm just going to do one Boolean tool at a time because otherwise you probably won't be able to Boolean anything out as they all touch on the on the center part. And here we go. That's our setting done, nice and clean. Now I am going to attach the shank, but I have problems. So this is where it starts. Let's have a look here very carefully. So our shank is not capped, first of all, so we need to make it into a closed poly surface. It's not possible. Why? Ah, because it's not planar, because I just moved the top three points straight up to the, the, the rail, and um, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, 
as you can see, it's not going to cut or bullion out. Uh, and we have a hole at the bottom of our setting. What are we going to do about that? Okay, first of all, I'm going to fix the hole at the bottom of the setting. How I'm going to do that is I'm just going to extrude the ring size curve with the gumball. Make a surface, simple surface. And move that surface directly under the setting. And we're just going to trim a little surface, a little convex surface out of that using the setting and delete that surface and we're left with just the right size to cap our hole. There we go, it's closed valid poly surface. Now we need to fix the shank. So what we need to do is we need to bring that shank into the setting so we can cut, cut away the, the, where it meets the, the setting. Uh, this is perhaps a bit of a roundabout way of doing things but it happens. So what do we do here? There's a good, you've got a good bit of troubleshooting. I'm going to extend these surfaces. I'm going to extend the surface of my shank. I'm going to have to do it in parts because the extend, extend surface only works. So if we do each surface separately, just extend each surface out. Um, it doesn't matter if it's the same length or not, so it's irrelevant because you're just going to cut it all the way. Anyway, uh, so I'm just going to do that. The other side over here. And go over to the other side of the shank. Same here. Okay, great. Now, select them all and uh, join them again. Ah, oh, what's happening down here? Ah, oh, okay, so something's not making sense. I see. I decided to leave everything out here. It's just select all these surfaces on the shank and hit join. Okay, and flip that out. So you can see the outside, not the inside. And now we're going to use the trim tool to trim the setting away from our shank and just delete those surface on the inside and against the setting. Same, we're going to extract the surface of the setting and we're going to use that to create the caps just by trimming them. So there we go. And join that. Now we've got closed valid poly surface for the shank too. Now if we do a boolean we shouldn't have too big a problem. And there we go. There's your solitaire ring. So you can swap that stone out for something a bit bigger, something a bit smaller, um, make the claws higher, a bit lower, and all using that principle for solitaire. Uh, simple, elegant, and uh, yeah, you can play with your bullion, bullion cutting tools a bit so you can change the way the claws look as well. Um, it's classic ring design. Everyone loves them, and uh, we'll probably have a couple more of these on our YouTube channel, different flavors. Uh, so, it's a, a, um, a very loved, very loved ring design. Hope you like that. I hope you you learned something good there, and uh, we wish you a great week. See you again next time and uh, please remember to just click like and, and uh, uh, subscribe to our channel.